Hi friends, Sarah here with the Holy Mess. And in this video, we are going to talk about how you are adjusting to the new Weight Watchers personal points plan. If you're doing really well, we wanna hear all about that. If you're struggling, let's talk about how to work through some of those challenges. Um, well, I'm Sarah and I've lost over 130 pounds and I've been maintaining that for many years, actually coming up on two decades. So I am a Weight Watchers member, just like you are. I track my points and it's part of what has helped me continue to stay successful with maintaining my weight loss. Okay, so we've been using the new personal points plan for about a week now. How are you doing? If you are loving the new plan, would you write the word love in the comments? If you are somewhere in the middle, there are things you like and things that you're struggling with, write the word middle in the comments. And if you are really struggling with adapting to these changes, write the word help in the comments. So in the comments below, let us know how you're doing with either love, middle, or help. <laughs> If you are struggling, tell us a little bit more about what has been challenging for you. I would love to hear about it. I can tell you about some of the things that I've been hearing from some of my readers on Weight Watchers Connect and some of the Weight Watchers Facebook groups and on Instagram. Um, some of the points for our favorite foods have gone up. Um, cheese is one I've heard people talk about. A lot of like used to have one point string cheese. Now most of those are two. There's still a few um, you can find for one point, but most are two. Some of the Weight Watchers foods have gone up. Peanut butter, that's my personal love. Two tablespoons of peanut butter is seven points now, you guys. Seven points. Oh my goodness. I get 19 in a day. That's a huge chunk of points for what I can eat. I can eat standing at the kitchen counter in just a couple seconds. Um, for some people, counting fruit has been a big change. If you are diabetic and marked that on your plan, um, a banana is four points. Uh, I could easily eat two bananas in a day. That's eight points. Um, uh, finding the points for your favorite recipes might be a challenge. I know for myself, I'm working on adjusting all of the points. I have hundreds of recipes on my website. There's gonna be a link where you can um, click the link and it takes you right to the points in the Weight Watchers app, but that's gonna take some time for us to adapt over to. So, so that's a challenge or just sharing recipes like in Facebook groups or on Instagram the points are gonna be different for everyone, so that's challenging. For some of you, maybe you're doing really well with the plan, but you're tired of hearing other people complain in meetings or in groups. If that's you, just hold on to that thought because I've got more for you here in just a second. If you are doing great with the new plan, would you share with us in the comments what are you liking about it? What is going really well for you with the new plan? Or even if you're middle of the road, but you've got some things you like. Lots of people are loving that they get points for drinking water, especially those who are already doing it and now they just have to track it. For activity, people who are really active, who get tons of steps in the day, are finding that they get to trade that if they want to for more food, they get more weekly points. Um, veggie eaters unite. I'm a big veggie eater, so I get lots and lots of points because I eat tons of vegetables. That's a huge part of my weight loss strategy and maintaining my weight loss is eating lots of vegetables. Um, for some people, this plan ended up really similar to the last one. I've heard people who were on blue or green who've been able to say I pretty much was able to take the assessment and tweak it to where I'm pretty much doing the same as my previous plan. Um, a great tip I've heard from some people that I really wouldn't have thought of is that for some people, foods that they really like that could potentially be zero points, they actually don't choose it in the assessment because they find that when that's a zero point food, they tend to overeat it. And I just, I really wouldn't have thought of it that way, but I think that's really smart. In the past, if a food was zero points, it was zero points and that's just the way it was. And yes, you could like technically count points for it, but that'd be a little more tricky. So for example, I've heard some people say, I love popcorn, I could eat tons and tons of popcorn, but the truth is I really don't want to have that as a zero point food, because then it just leads me to eat bowls and bowls of it. 
Or another one I've heard people talk about like that is potatoes. Like they could just eat so much of potatoes and that just really isn't such a healthy thing for them mentally to have that as a zero point food. So they actually, even though they love it and maybe eat it, you know, on a somewhat regular basis, they do not choose that in their food assessment so that that food continues to have points for them. And I think that's actually a really wise strategy. All of us need to find what works for us. So if you are someone who's struggling, or maybe you're not struggling, but you're kind of tired of hearing people complain about it, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, you know, many of us are coming into Weight Watchers with some type of fairly serious food issues. I mean, let's face it, all of us are here because we have some issues with food. Maybe your issues aren't as extreme as someone else's, but you've got some food stuff going on or you wouldn't be here. Um, I can tell you that for myself, I came into Weight Watchers with very serious food issues. Um, I've been doing Weight Watchers off and on most of my life, most of my adult life. But when I came into it this final time, I had actually started therapy with a therapist who works with people with eating disorders. And although I didn't classify myself as having an eating disorder at the time, I recognize now that I did. I was a compulsive overeater. I was a binge eater and certainly had binge eating disorder because I had a pattern of binge eating on a regular basis. Um, and so I think recognizing that maybe if you aren't struggling, um, I'm happy for you, but to please just have some compassion and grace for the people who are struggling. I had read about a woman who um, had mentioned that she was doing Weight Watchers Purple, and for most of her life, she has had eating disorders. And for the first time, Purple really helped her because of those 300 zero-point foods. She was able to just relax a little bit with food. And now with this change, she's really struggling again. So, um, so you know, her, her story just really touched me because I could relate to it. I think that uh, something I always say is our food issues are so public and yet so private. You know, we wear on our body how we're doing. People with other struggles or food addictions, people really might not know and they might be able to do it almost completely in secret, at least for a time. But we wear how we're doing on, on our bodies and yet it's so, it's so private. You know, these are deeply personal things that we hold dear. So again, just, just having compassion for your fellow Weight Watchers members. They're going to get it. They're going to come along or they're going to leave Weight Watchers and find some other program that works for them. And that's okay too. But just recognizing that this is hard for many of us. You know, some of my darkest moments in my life have been around my food issues. Not all of them, but a lot of them. I can tell you, um, as I shared, I was a binge eater. I had eating binges where I ate thousands and thousands and thousands of calories in one sitting. Um, I would eat an entire box of the um, drumstick ice cream cones and then I would hide the package so my husband wouldn't see and then I would go and buy another box and then truthfully do the exact same thing the next day. Um, I used to drive through the drive through um, fast food and I would go through more than one because I was too embarrassed by how much food I was eating. And then I would quickly eat it in the car. I mean, before I'd even paid for it, I was already shoving the french fries into my mouth. And then I would go home and eat dinner with my family and pretend like I hadn't even done that. I've had moments where I was just disgusted with myself for how much I was eating and so I would throw the food away and then later I would go back and get it out of the trash. So, um, so I've really had some dark moments and that's just eating moments, then there are the dark moments that I've had because of my weight. I have been at parties where people asked me if I was pregnant and I wasn't, and I was in the bathroom crying into a towel so that no one would hear me because I was so embarrassed and struggling so much with my weight issues. I remember driving and my stomach was touching the steering wheel and I wasn't pregnant and thinking I've got to make a change, I've got to get healthy, but being so overwhelmed that I wasn't able to do that. 
Um, you know, I there was also a time when our family, my husband's a pastor, our family was on a very strict budget. I was a stay-at-home mom at the time. We were foster parents and um, we just barely had enough money to get by for groceries. And I would spend some of that money that really should have gone to my family on foods that I knew I was going to binge on. I was not proud of that at those moments, but again, it was the best that I could do at the time. A lot of us too, who have these food issues, struggle with some really, re really real and serious food anxiety. Maybe you can relate to this. Do you not wanna share your food? Or you get really upset with your family if they eat foods that you had saved back for yourself, for your Weight Watchers points, or you, know, you have your Weight Watchers foods and they have their regular foods, and what if they dig into your foods? Or you worry about what's gonna happen if your family gets into it. I mean, I mark my food with my name on it. I'll hide it in the back of the fridge so I can make sure that I have it. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it, it, there's a certain extent where there's nothing wrong with wanting to plan ahead and be prepared. You know, I want these foods that I know work for me for my plan. But I would also say a lot of us have a real scarcity mindset with food. You know, I'm, um, you know, in most other areas of life, a very gracious and open person, but sometimes with my, my food, I get very um, protective, like overly protective of my food. And I've thought about that, like why, why is that? Because my, my weight issues are an issue of excess. It's because I'm overeating, not because of scarcity, but because I'm overeating. And I can tell you that I'm very blessed that I have, you know, yes, we've had financial struggles in the past, but I've never had a time where I did not have enough to eat. And I know that some of you who are watching this video have had those times, but I'm blessed that I've always had enough to eat. So maybe not everything I want, it might not be T-bone steak, but there's always food in the house that I can eat. And it was that way when I was growing up too. So I just wonder sometimes, I've thought about why do we have such a scarcity mindset and such anxiety around food? And I believe that the reason for that is because as we have tried to lose weight, we have had times of great restriction, overly restricting our food. I know I certainly have. You know, for so many years, my pattern was binge, massively overeat, way under eat, overeat and you know and so it looked like this up down up down and I believe that those times of overly restricting is what leads to scarcity and that's what can lead to the anxiety we feel like someone's going to take our food away from us and that that gives us real fear because we have had times even though it was self-imposed we have had times of hunger times when we have been overly hungry because we have overly restricted so again, I just want to encourage you to have compassion for other people or perhaps compassion for yourself. If you have times that you have that food anxiety, um, be good to yourself. It's because you've had times that you have been hungry or that you have overly restricted. And so the more that you can give yourself the food that you need, the nourishment that you need, even while you're losing weight, but not overly restricting. So for some of us, that means eating all of our daily points. It might mean eating some of your weekly points, but eating enough throughout the day and throughout the week. Um, for me, that looks like eating consistently throughout the day and not saving all my points for nighttime. It also means eating consistently throughout the week and not saving all my points for the weekend. Um, it means including treats on a regular basis, eating some junk food sometimes on purpose, even when I feel like I haven't like held it in, held it in, held it in, and then I'm binging on it, but eating it throughout the week. So if you're struggling with these changes, please know that that is normal or you see people who are struggling. It's actually pretty normal for those of us who have had food issues in the past because we might have some scarcity or some anxiety around food, even if we've never actually been physically overly hungry because there wasn't enough food available, it, we might have done it to ourselves in an effort to lose weight. So can you relate to any of this? If you can relate to having some food anxiety or some food scarcity, could you share about that in the comments? And um, just tell us about that so that we know that we aren't alone. 
And then finally, I really want to encourage you with the new Weight Watchers plan. If this has been a, a challenging time for you, know that you're not alone and you are going to adjust to this. Some of this with the uh, um, foods being higher in points on Weight Watchers, even though it's hard, it's actually a good thing because Weight Watchers is moving us into eating more whole real foods and foods that are high in protein, high in fiber, low in saturated fat. So I know that it's tough, but it's good. You know, like for some people who are diabetic, maybe um, even though it's really painful that two bananas has eight points, but maybe that's a good thing because maybe for you, for your individual body, eating two bananas wouldn't be such a good idea, wouldn't be so good for your blood sugar. Maybe um, for some of you, string cheese, while well, that's been a great snack in the past and that's still okay to have, maybe having it only one point means that you kind of relied on that and maybe there's a different food that would be healthier for you. I know for me, Snacking on spoonfuls of peanut butter is not a good idea. And so even though it's painful, having it as seven points is, is necessary so that I really think twice before I bring that spoon up to my mouth and I'm just eating it like while I'm doing other things and I'm not even paying attention. I also really want to encourage you that even though the Weight Watchers plan changed last week, food didn't change. An apple is still an apple. A banana is still a banana. A piece of chicken breast is still chicken breast. Nothing changed with food. And nothing changed with your body. Your body doesn't know that you're doing Weight Watchers right now. So whatever you were doing two weeks ago, your body still thinks things are exactly the same. So keep that in mind. And as I talked about in a previous video, never give away your power. You control what goes into and out of your mouth, and that is extremely powerful. Don't give that power away to a program. I love Weight Watchers. I think it's a great program. I think there are some really good changes with personal points. There's some things that maybe don't make me quite so happy, but overall, I think it's a great system. But don't give your power away to anyone, including this system. You have the power. You have the power to lose the weight. You have the power to get to your goal weight. You have the power to stay there for the rest of your life. You have the power to eat healthy, to make good choices, to, um, to choose what's right for your individual body. Don't give that power away to anyone, including Weight Watchers, no matter how much we love it. I would also encourage you to use this as a chance to kind of reboot, to try some new things. Um, you know, maybe you're like, I loved Blue Plan. I'm sticking with Blue Plan. You can't take this Blue Plan out of my hands. And if that's truly what works for you and you found it, I think that's great. But why not try the new system for a while and maybe you'll find something that works for you even better. You know, I'm excited about the Zero Point Avocado. I'm not a huge avocado eater, but I decided to just try it just to see. I know it's been a food I've really restricted in the past, even though I know it's healthy because of the fat content. So I'm like, I'm giving this a try. I like it. It's tasty. I've been eating it every day and I'm going to see what it does with my weight loss. I also want to encourage you most of all that, friends, it's so worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it to keep going. I know it's not easy. Whether you're doing well with this plan or you're struggling with this plan, weight loss is hard. It's hard. It's hard in this culture where we have food coming at us all the time. You know, you can drive 10 minutes and hit like, you know, 20 different fast food places or restaurants that you drive by. You go to the grocery store, there's tons of junk food in every single aisle. You go to an event and there's food at parties. It's challenging. Weight loss is not easy, but this is what I want to tell you. It is worth it. It is so worth it. I wish that I could somehow let you experience life, um, you know, at your goal weight just for a day to see what it's like. But I want to tell you that it is fabulous. It's fabulous. This morning when I weighed in, I weighed 119 pounds and I used to weigh 250 pounds. So I can tell you that my, my whole life has changed. I have a business now 
that revolves around helping other people lose weight. But even if I didn't have that, just the ways that God has been able to use me and my experiences to help other people is incredible. The energy that I have is incredible. Shopping for clothes is really, really fun. It's so much more fun when there's so many things that I can fit into. I got Stitch Fix this last year just because it was fun because I wanted to. It was great to be able to order clothes and have them come to my house. I go to the thrift store and I buy clothes and I bring them home and they actually fit me. Um, there's just so many amazing things. I can, I can walk, I can run, things that I could never do before. I can go up and down steps. I can get down on the floor and, you know, play with little kids and then I can get up. There are so many beautiful things and really honestly one of the biggest things is the self-confidence that I can walk into a room and I don't worry anymore of you know what are people gonna think are they gonna see my roles will I be the largest one here and so I want you to have that same joy of being at your goal weight not not because weight looks matter or because you're not you're an absolutely beautiful person right where you are today. So please don't misunderstand. But I want for you the health and the joy and the happiness and the confidence that comes from, um, from being a healthy person. And I can tell you that when I was 100 pounds heavier, I, I just was not a healthy person. And so I, it's so great being at this goal weight. It is worth it. So before I close out this video, in the comments, tell me what is your biggest takeaway? What do you want to take into this next week and into today and tomorrow that can help you have the most success with Weight Watchers Personal Points and with weight loss? And I want you to know that I am here to encourage you every step of the way. I'm Sarah with The Holy Mess. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.